and we're back. Christy, you're back. On, well, it's North American, so I'm so glad I missed you. Like I was sitting here last week and think, what am I going to talk about without her? I channeled your energy. That's what I did. <laughs> How are you, my love? I know we um, we picked on purpose the topic of why investing in yourself is so essential. Um, and I want to get to what that actually has to do with the ability to making money and how that correlates. But first, my darling, um, for, for everybody that's listening and, and is not watching the YouTube video, she is glowing. Like uh, literally there is like this spotlight <laughs> coming from the screen right now, which is so beautiful. I anticipated it, but I didn't. Well, yeah, it's just beautiful to see. So how is your, how is your soul, my love? Oh, my soul is so good. Literally, I just feel like I'm like buzzing. So I just got back from Costa Rica. I was there for a week uh, at a retreat and I became a, a certified retreat facilitator myself. And I will be hosting a retreat at the mansion that I was staying at in uh, Mata Palo, Costa Rica. And it's just so beautiful. Um, so I did set dates for January. Uh, we in the second week of January. So the details to come in the next few weeks, but um, I'm, I'm very, very inspired uh, for what I'm creating. And I just have such a deeper vision and I fell in love with that area of the world. So uh, I feel very called to spend a lot of time there. And I just, um, I feel renewed. I feel rejuvenated and I feel like a lot of the soul um, investigating I've done in the last few months has really led me to where I'm at right now. And um, I just have a deeper vision of how I, how I can serve in multiple capacities. So um, I can share more as I evolve. Everything's still kind of settling in from what I experienced and what I take, I've taken in and, um, you know, really solidifying what that looks like in a cohesive manner right now. It's like, I have creativity like all over the place right now. So I just, I'm very passionate about personal and spiritual development. I'm obviously passionate about health and fitness. And um, I really am excited to incorporate all those things into um, a process and a package and a whatever that serves um, whoever that resonates with. So I'm just, I'm just really, really excited for what, what's developing. And I will say that like, this is all the culmination of me just taking the last few years to really learn more about myself and what I feel like I have to serve and why I'm here and what's holding me back. And, and it, it's just like, I feel like we're in the evolution process of, you know, through this journey that, this is where the abundance is really starting. So um, it's just been the patience of, of the journey of however long it took for this stuff to really click in for me. And, you know, it's changed my life in, in numerous ways throughout these last three and a half years or so. But uh, now I feel it. it, now it's time for the bigger shifts. So I'm really excited. Aww. Good. Yeah. So, what have I missed with you? Oh, what <laughs> have you missed? Um, well, I started another round with the Fast Foundation Mastermind. And when we're talking about um, growth, so the first time I was in that space, I think I was about an inch tall mm -hmm. at any given point in, in terms of like feeling worthy of myself or being there. Um, being around the other people, energy, seeing Lori and Chris and like not feeling worthy at all to ask questions or even thinking I have no superpowers and I have nothing to offer mm -hmm. to really um, share my vision and saying, hey, this is what I can do. This is what I'm looking for. Um, I realized that I suck at asking questions. I really do um, because I am still in the process of understanding that there is no stupid question and that everything that I've learned as a dancer actually is what, not everything, but 
everything that I have learned around what it means to ask questions and, and the relation to, you know, you're stupid if you ask questions and you're going to be yelled at and, 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 and has led me to the point where I'd rather not ask the question and therefore not step forward because I don't want to expose my uh, knowledge. That's not a word, but my, me not knowing, right. Or me not taking the step to, to research, et cetera. So that's definitely something that um, I am working on. It is a huge topic right now in the Bali world too, the, the asking questions and the, what has been, it's almost like we opened up a can of worms talking about that subject, asking questions and how it's actually not allowed. So, but how, how am I doing? I'm doing super good and I can feel every day the growth happening, which is, it's like fast tracking. And I'm, I'm not saying that to, to shine a light on me, but it is like, I'm in a German, I'm on a German Autobahn and we're going in a Porsche and we're going fast. So I have trouble sleeping. I wake up at 3, 3 a.m., anywhere between 2.30 and 3, ready to go. And then by, by about now, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need a nap. Um, and I am so excited for what's to come. Like I find more people to collaborate with um, and my gremlins are loud but i'll hug him and i'll let him go so that's where i'm at hi hey i i love what you said about exposure too which again i don't want to go on a whole different topic but um i think that that could be noted for us to talk about at some point is um you know actions that maybe expose us and that makes us feel vulnerable and uncomfortable and that that's a whole nother like level of breakthrough to get past that point. It just popped into my head. Cause that that's that vulnerability is something that that is a threshold that isn't always easy to cross over. You know what? You're so right. Actually, that is one of the hardest things. Mm -hmm. Um, there's so many levels of yeah. exposure or authenticity or like being really vulnerable. There, mm -hmm. there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I made a note. So, say yeah, to so did I. <laughs> okay, let's talk about why investing in oneself is essential. Why I personally would say do not is invest any kind of money into the stock market or anywhere before you haven't felt worthy enough to invest in yourself first. Um, and what kind of a difference would we actually see in the world if people would change their mindset to, you know, you invest in yourself and your return of investment is the biggest that you can ever see. And, and the safest to be quite honest too. I mean, people don't see it that way. And I've never really, um, seen it that way either. That's one of the reasons why I was hesitant to invest in myself was because, well, what if I don't deliver? What if I don't put in enough to make that um, return of investment worthwhile? And mm -hmm. what I learned so far is that anything that I've ever invested in myself and we're, we're cracking, you know, six figures at this point um, has come back tenfold in whichever possible way. So let's, let me, let me ask you this question. What was your biggest barrier in, in, in feeling or that you actually pulled the trigger, that you put in the credit card number, that you considered, that you actually took the action to invest in yourself? For me, it was understanding that there were parts of me that were holding me back, but I didn't know what they were. Like I, I didn't have the awareness to even understand how to change. 
um, or how to think different. Or uh, initially, I actually didn't understand why I felt unworthy because it was a surprise to me to discover that I even did. But I had to realize, you know, the what I looked at in my external worlds with whatever my financial situation was, the starving artist mentality, all that, that like that was a culmination of beliefs and stories that I created for myself. So I had that awareness, but I didn't know why. So it was pretty much that it was, I just got to a point where I said, I feel like there's something more for me. And I feel like I'm in a hamster wheel and I don't really know how to get out of it. I don't feel like what I look around at in my life, I would be happy if nothing changed in the next 30 to 40 years. So then I need to do something different. And it was really scary to, to invest because I had such a limited money mindset at the time. So that it wasn't an easy decision, but ultimately I just knew that I needed assistance. Mm. Okay. And I wasn't happy staying the way I was. So th those were the two things is, is, you know, if nothing changed, how would you feel? And I knew I wouldn't feel good. You know, I would, because I'm, I'm seeing so much that the hamster wheel can become mm -hmm. so much the norm and yep. something that we're so used to that we are not even capable of asking the question like what would it look like if i were to change what i'm doing or who i am is there is there actually such thing right and the answer is absolutely you do not have to stay who you are today you do not have to do the same thing for the rest of your life um, gosh, please don't, because it's going to be so boring and so unfulfilling. Um, you have to think of what's next. Yeah. You know, let's, like, even if you're stepping out of the performing arts circle, like, or you, you have reached the title of, you know, team captain, or you are the principal dancer of a company, what's next? And I've been thinking about this for quite some time. I get this so easy to settle. Yeah. Because that is really what we're looking from the outside. Like that's the highest title you can get, right? Yep. These titles, that's what, we yes. did, uh, yeah. what we're chasing. Yes. Um, but who are we becoming after that? Yes. And okay, you go ahead and you're burning. I can see. Well, and for me, it was reflecting on why those were so important. Because as I started to develop those things that were really, really, really important to me, weren't as important to me. So I think it's that too is, and I'm not saying that everybody is, but if you're chasing that principal title for your own validation and love, is there a more pure, peaceful way to find that love instead of, you know, through the recognition? And if that's not why, if you just genuinely love it, then that's great. For me, that's not what it was. If I was chasing a title in any capacity, in dance or in anything, it was so I could feel good enough because I didn't feel good enough. So I, I would reflect that too. It's like, when I started to learn that, it, it's like all the things that I was chasing didn't matter to me anymore. They weren't what I really wanted. I just didn't feel good. So that hamster wheel I put myself in because I, I didn't feel good enough. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I can so relate to that. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're when we're looking at investing in oneself and why it is so important, I believe that the very first selling point here is the the need to be seen from the outside. That that never ending game of trying trying 
to be good enough for somebody else will actually dissipate by finding your your inner strength and and finding yourself and who you are not thinking of who you have to serve in order to be good enough but be yourself first it's everything that we're seeing right now particular in the in the arts is it always looks on the outside who to blame who to chase what to get from where and how to react to certain situations versus actually going back to the bar, putting yourself into first position and finding your plie again. And I'm making that particularly for, for them that, that we're actually stop creating this lack mentality because anything on the outside will always create lack if we don't know who we are on the inside. And I made you cry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just really resonate with everything that you just said. That was everything about how I used to show up in the world. Me too, over and over again. And you know what? I find myself still to this day, um, if I'm not really careful, slipping back into that. Oh my gosh, I didn't have enough comments on this one. Or <laughs> this coach didn't see me and why am I not being shouted out and, 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 and yeah. where if we're going back to our first position, it is about serving people. It's about touching that one soul. It's about making a difference in the world. And that's for you and I, the same as for the arts. And when we are learning and understanding that back to basis, back to our own power also means financial stability, then we're talking. And all of this starts actually with understanding that we are worthy of growing, that yeah. we are worthy of investing in ourselves, that not one penny spent on ourselves is a waste. Yeah, I agree. I And I agree in terms of service too, because what I'm experiencing now is understanding that by me growing myself and showing up differently, energy is contagious. And so there's, there is a ripple effect and, and you become an example of, of an energy state that people don't maybe not even understand why they they want to be drawn to you, but they do. And um, so just like, you know, gossip and pettiness can spread easily through a green room, so can the opposite. And so that's what I'm experiencing too. Like, it's not just about ourselves. It's about the type of people that we'll, we will help ourselves become to help others. And for me, it literally started because my anxiety was so bad and my husband and I were just in such a low place in our lives that we just said like, something has to change. This mm -hmm. is not working. My physical health is being affected by my anxiety. And I said, I have to figure out how to manage living. And so it did start with just me, but it's evolved to so much more. And I'm understanding and seeing what that ripple effect is, that it truly is you know, the betterment of you is the betterment of the people around you too. And it oh. just brings you more peace. So, you know, if you don't live with, with feeling grounded and peaceful every day, I'm not saying that I never feel anything but kumbaya. I, of course I do, but I, I understand how to manage better. I just manage <laughs> my emotions. I manage how I respond versus react to things everything's so much less dramatic and so much less a problem now everything just seems like okay we'll work it out we'll figure it out but it's because i've changed my state so it just makes life easier too well you're not reacting to what's coming at no. you you're choosing how to feel um a little mic drop moment here i yeah. i think I, I couldn't agree more with your statement around when we invest in ourselves, we are in, in inherently 
also investing in our circle, our our people that we're surrounding ourselves with, um, in them too. And yeah. even if that means that they no longer are our people or that, you know, there are new people coming into our lives, whatever that looks like, but we cannot, you cannot um, hold other people accountable for your own misery. Everything you want, everything you need is right at your fingertips. It's inside you. It's a decision, a choice away. And, and that's really as simple as it is, right? Like we, we, can, we can talk about the mountain 400 times in different ways, but what it really comes down to is making a choice, choosing you over the drama, choosing yourself over the addiction to, to judge others and make yourself feel better, choosing you over finding fault in everything else but you perhaps but that's not right because as as artists we only we also look at ourselves and we think the least of ourselves um so point at yourself that's yeah. where it starts that's where it always will start and it took i think me figuring that out was like the biggest gift and i could have never figured it out on my own like i really needed to be put into a really big room with really, really scary people to chase that out of me. Yeah. Yeah. And it is triggering. I was very triggered by this topic when, when I first started of like, no, what that person said that's horrible is not, does not have anything to do with me, but it does. It does because if it triggers me, because now if somebody can say something horrible I don't even, it's like, it doesn't even like come in my fields because I don't let it because I don't want anything to do with that. So if it's that type of a person, they're not even in my scope. I'm not even allowing that in. So I'm not going to get wrapped up into that, but I did before. And I had to understand that like my trigger in that is something to do with me because otherwise just don't let it resonate. Like it just, isn't even in my scope. So I could go on about this forever. That that's that's beautiful because it, it is such a revelation, right? You no longer depend on other people's opinion. Like they don't Ooh. I wouldn't say they don't matter, but they're not there to take you out anymore. They're not there to ruin your day or your week or your year. No. You know, they don't take your power away. Right. And in the not matter part, what doesn't matter to me is whether they like me or not, whether or not they agree with what I stand for or not. We're all here to, to do different things and have different positions and different opinions. And I'm not here to trounce on anybody else's. And so if I don't resonate with someone, that's fine. I, they're, they're not who I'm meant to help or be around or, or whatever. We're not meant to collaborate. And that that's literally as far as I get now uh, versus and what that's what investing in myself has done is take away the energy where I I um oh I just lost it. It took away the energy uh where everything was like about me. Like I made everything about myself or took offense. That's what I that's what I meant. So that's where it, where it is. It's back. I took offense to everything. So if somebody didn't like me, I took offense to that. I thought, well, what what is it about me that they don't like? And I I, I tried to figure out and manufacture how they could like me. Well, that's not me. And so that's that was one of the biggest first discoveries from my investment in myself is that I just realized that, wow, you're not showing up as you because you just want people to like you. And so that was that was where everything was driving behind that energy. I just wanted to be liked because I didn't feel loved myself. Like I didn't love myself. So I just wanted everybody to like me. I wanted everybody to think I was talented, which is why I shot for the titles. I wanted dance captain in every contract. I wanted these roles. I wanted because I just, everything in my soul required somebody else to tell me that I was good enough. 
And that in and of itself, if I stop, which thank God I didn't stop investing in myself, but if I stop just there, that release, that allowance to just feel worthy, no matter who thought what of me. And I wasn't, cause my hamster wheel was that, that's what I was in a hamster wheel about mm-hmm. wanting to be liked and, and recognized and seen. That's what just came in seen. I wanted to be seen and loved and liked. So and I wouldn't, I would never have explored any of this if I had not started to invest in myself. And I, when I say invest in myself, I mean, in a lot of ways, I did get a coach. Um, I did start going to events. Uh, I bought books. Um, I listened to podcasts. So not everything was completely paid. I invested time too. I invested a, plenty of money and I invested my time. I invested my time in, in resources and people that resonated with me to help. So I, I did a full immersion in many aspects. So that, that's what I personally mean. Um, when I, when I started that in investment and it was, it's like you said, it's, um, regardless of the amount of abundance that's come back to me at this point, uh, abundance isn't just money. Abundance is a lot of things. I've had people and opportunities and other things come to me because of the initial start catapult of this investment. Mm. Thank you for bringing that up because my next question or a topic that I, I wanted us to explore is that what does it actually mean investing? And I said necessary mm-hmm. mean like you have to put money out front or what other ways are there? So, and, and you said it beautifully. The, the very first investment is listen to podcasts on a daily basis, sit down and read 10 pages of a book every day, Mm -hmm. go move your body, not only in a studio, move it to have fun. Me too. Yeah. Go sit by the ocean, go into nature, put your feet into the green grass, anything like that is an investment. Go sit down for half an hour and free write something yeah. that I still am struggling with because I am so judgmental. Like I was like, yeah, I have nothing to say. I have absolutely nothing to say. And you know, once in a blue moon, I actually sit down and write. I was like, oh, I have a lot to say. Oh, darn. So I have that gate for me that still needs to open, but that is definitely something that is so important. Yeah. Yeah. And that's investing in yourself, in your future self, actually. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you want to, you want to become more, I, I hope so. Um, and that is how we get there. It's not happening by, I don't know, once a week, listen to, it is happening, just slower. Um, but you can speed up the, the, the process, I would say, by being more consistent about it, right? Yeah. The, the same discipline that particularly dancers um, showcase in a studio, that discipline comes in so handy, you can redirect it so beautifully into other activities. Mm -hmm. That's going to take a while. It's not a overnight process. It's It's a new habit and new habits take time. And and so what I would say in, in conjunction with that is, you know, I, I was coming from such a perfectionist energy when I first started this, that I thought like everything had to look you know, if I followed somebody, a high performance person or whatever, I thought I had to follow to a T everything that they did or else, you know, I wasn't going to be successful or I wasn't going to be whatever, because that's where I was at. And, um, well, that's wonderful. I was coming about it with the energy of like, if it doesn't look like this, it's not going to work. So what I would say now if, if anyone's open to receiving this is to take all those things that Suzanne just listed as options of what to do and figure out just right now in this now time, which ones feel like good or exciting for you and start with those first. You don't have to do the entire list. You don't have to do all of those things. Just figure out what you would be like jived to want to do each day. For me, podcasts were awesome and um audible books and in the beginning were awesome because i could take no extra time in my day 
I could use, I thought about the things like, what are mindless things I do every day? At that point I was commuting. So I had about a 25, 30 minute commute. I always took about a half hour to do my hair and makeup and get ready in the morning um, to cook or make my meals to go for the day, whatever, all those three things. Cool. I already do those anyway. So I said, those are the times where I'm not going to put music on or anything. I'm going to put on my audible book, or I'm going to put it on my podcast. So now my radio is never on in the car, unless my husband's in the car with me, but if I'm in the car by myself, I, it's a podcast, non-negotiable, no matter where I'm going, I have a podcast going. I'm driving anyway. So I'm going to absorb something of value. Same thing with doing my makeup or my hair. I don't need to listen to music. I'm going to listen to an audible book or a podcast. Um, so those were things that were really easy to implement where I didn't even have to change my daily to do's. I just added that in. Um, and that was very, very beneficial. So if that resonates with you, that's the easiest thing. Like if you're in the subway or you're in your car, put your earbuds in and, and instead of listening to music on your commute, listen to something that fuels your soul and just pick a podcast that resonates with you. Find somebody, everybody's um, messages are delivered so differently because we're all so different. Just find someone that resonates with you to start and just start feeding your mind in a different way. That's, that's literally what, three and a half years ago. That's how I started. Yeah. Exactly. And it was no more investment either. It was free. No. Well, the audibles maybe, but a podcast is free. And I didn't take any extra time in my day to, to do that. So that's the easiest way to start. That's what I've, I've told people. And from that, go find Facebook groups, find communities that you can associate with and, and set aside maybe 20 minutes a day to you know pop your nose in there, see who you can connect with. Um, the saying, your network is your net worth is a true story. Yes. So when we're looking at Look at your network, look at the people that are in your circle and look where they're at. Is yeah. that really where you want to be at? Or do you know yet where you want to be at? Maybe you have to start on a different you know, spectrum, but these are the first questions. Are the people in your life? And the more and more and more I'm diving into everything rises or falls with the people that you are surrounding yourself with. Yes. You can have the best goals or the best ambitions, anything like that. If the people around you are not, forcing might be a harsh of a world, but elevating you to where you want to go, then don't, you don't have to proceed. Because these people will be your anchor. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the people in your life, that is where you you need to like be really particular on where and where you're going, who you're hanging out with, and finding groups on Facebook or Instagram or God knows where meetup groups. Um, Point to Rise is a lovely community that raises the vibration where you can find a different way of thinking because that's what it's about right like if you want to le level up we are encouraging you to level up you um you need to look at things that you have or have going on and who you are and your emotions from a different perspective and these kind of groups definitely give you the opportunity to do so yeah yeah right i agree and these are all for free. Like it's not going to cost you a penny. Nope. What it requires though is commitment and consistency. Yeah. And what I also have learned is that the more money I invest, the more I show up because it does scare out the next version of myself. So I have to say that too. I don't put much time or effort into any kind of a free stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. For me personally, that's where I'm at. Like I have to, I have to spend money on my coaching, on, on people. I'm buying literally my friends and I'm not ashamed of saying so. I'm buying myself a spot in the rooms that I want to be sur surround myself in with people that I know will push me outside of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And I have to say two years ago, if somebody would have told me that that's the person I'm going to be, it's like, oh, no, no, I'm, I, I, I don't like people. Or, and you can look at it from whatever perspective you want to. For me and, and for many entrepreneurs, that's actually how we surround ourselves with growth. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. What was the bridge? How did, what made you go from feeling like, I don't want to talk to people. I don't want, I don't want that to, to taking that step. What was that? Yeah. I was so, I was so tired. Okay. Tired of the life I had and the knowledge that, wait a second, I, I do think there is more and that came from listening to podcasts mm-hmm. like understanding that hey all of these stories that i made up are just those stories and i can change them it's in my hands like everything starts with me mm-hmm. being surrounded by 500 other women and and hearing that oh wow we actually are all struggling with the same stuff and if I actually surround myself with people that either have, you know, stepped forward a little bit or have gone the way already, um, that's, um, that's my ticket. Make my pain, my story and my, my, my superpower. Like enough with the shame of all the failures, use them as your superpower. Draw, draw your learnings from it. And, and understanding all of this. So I was tired of what I've seen. Like you can call it midlife crisis if you want to. It's like, I don't want to end my life this way. Like the kids are going to be out of the house in the next couple. Well, back then it was like in 10 years. And then what? What am I going to have to like, put my attention to? Yeah. Because it was never, it was about me, but in a completely wrong way, right? As you said, it was all about ego being the biggest overhead and so many artists and i i mean this with so much love but that is your biggest overhead is your ego and your perceived and i'm not talking about the ego as and i am so great and i'm so beautiful no these are all of your limiting beliefs all your glass ceilings because you're not able to take that next step that bigger leap into the highest version of yourself because you believe you have to be a certain point in order to be successful. And that's bullshit. So your ego truly is your biggest overhead. And when you understand that, that's where freedom lies. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Oh my what? gosh. It's like, I am. Ooh. All right, let's bring it in. Okay. Okay. Oh, that was so good. Um, here is here is what you can do. If this resonated, like our tangent today, if this resonated with you, give me, Christy, give me two things that somebody eager to get ready that they can do right now um, on a piece of paper, in their journal, wherever they are right now, the two things to start with. Mm. I would sit down, just get quiet with yourself, you know, find a little nook and sit down with yourself and look at every aspect of your life. Um, and just see if it's your ideal life that every aspect, no matter what you're looking at is exactly the way you would want it. And if not identify which areas don't feel like that for you first. And then you can reverse engineer of how to get you to that point. And use then the second would be either to reach out to one of us, reach out to the Point to Rise community or any other community. If you're not currently in uh, a, a Facebook community like she talked about, find one, find people that resonate with you and see if you don't know where to go and how to improve those areas. If somebody can direct you to a book, a podcast, another person to help you uh, start to implement that. Because I believe that now, I didn't before, I believe that we all deserve and have every 
um, we're meant to be here to, to be happy in every aspect of our life. We're not necessarily presented a world that looks like that, but I believe that we can make that choice. Like you said, everything is a choice. We can make that choice where regardless of how the world's been presented to us, we can decide what we want our world to look like. And, but it is like, we've already said, it is our own responsibility to take whatever the story is about what the world it looks like and you know how, how good or bad or cruel it is and change that story to the one that's ideal for us. Beautiful. Can I add, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to add something Please. to number one. When we're looking at the aspects in our lives, um, let's break it down. So let's look at your relationships that you currently have, romantic, business, um, friendships, I would say. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then I would say your career. Is this where you want to be um, or not? And mm -hmm. if not, why is that? Mm -hmm. And then what else? We have relationship, we have career, um, family. Mm -hmm. Like what's your, what's your family like? Like where do you want to, do you want to have a family? Are you in that mindset? Is this something that's important to you? All, all of these things. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would also say maybe um, your identity. Mm -hmm. So I was um, faced with this question last week. And somebody asked me, how, how, would you, how would you describe yourself? And I got angry. I was like, you should know. You should describe me. I don't, I don't want to describe myself. I didn't want to describe myself because I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't want to just say some, some words out there. You know, I'm powerful. I'm courageous. I don't think of myself that way. I'm exactly in the middle of this is who I used to be and this is who I want to be and I struggle to let go of what used to be because I don't know I feel comfort there I I believe that when I shine too bright people will say well you don't deserve it you're arrogant you're you're all of these things right so mm -hmm. I would really dive into that too mm -hmm. because I had no idea that I actually had that attachment until somebody asked me that question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um yeah that's that's messy work it's yeah. okay to cry it's okay to get angry these are all triggers that could come up yeah. um uh, from both of us i would say sit there let it happen reach yeah. out to us if you can't get through it yourself um we can put something on i'm sure we could come up with another mm -hmm. episode or like a quick zoom training for everybody on how to really do that and work you through that. Um, yeah. And that is the starting point. That's where you have to start. Yeah. Really. There is, and there is no way around it. I tried so many times. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. Well, and just be okay, wherever you're at, whatever comes up, be okay. I, I actually just had a conversation with my husband over brunch yesterday. You know, we've had quite an evolution over the last few years and, um, you know, we went from having a lot of money and not being very happy and having a lot of destructive behavior behind that to kind of the reverse where we found our happiness, every, you know, life kind of exploded around us. So the abundance in terms of financial, what then after that wasn't as great, but then we started to find our happiness and now we're, we're establishing both. And now both is, are starting to like come to us and it, but that's just like what had to happen. And we were talking about how we just have to be solid and, and grateful of where we're at right now. Not like, oh my God, all the money that we had like five years ago. Wow. Well, we don't have, we, that's not, we don't have that anymore. Great. But we were miserable and we were going down a destructive path where I don't even know if one of us would be here on this planet still with all that money. So 
you know, we're happy where we're at because we had to go through that evolution. So that's where we were at right now of like, okay, now both are merging. We feel both. We feel both sides where we're happy and we're create, we're starting to create that abundance. So that's really exciting. So it's okay that we had this like kind of roller coaster give and take for the last few years. It was meant to be. And so be okay where we're at. And so just be okay where you're at right now because your past doesn't define your future. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, your past is just, you know, your, what do you say that? Your, your stepping stone for what's coming next. Like right. every, every dot will always be connected. You can only connect them backwards. You can't really look ahead and do that. Everything that you've gone through and will go through will be serving you. It's not happening to yep. you it's happening for you so yeah yeah well there we go that that is our wisdom for today i am so grateful that you're back um and tune in to next time you guys thanks for listening thank you bye thank you so much for listening if this message resonates with you please pass it on to someone who needs to hear this right now and if you like what you've heard your feedback will go a very long way. If you just take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review, that would mean the world to me. Till next time, point at yourself to rise to all that you are capable of.